Is getting your child to do their homework a daily struggle? Well, let's dive into those strategies to help your kid self-regulate enough to do their homework. Hi, I'm Dr. Roseanne, and this is part of our Behavior Decoded series, and we're talking about my kid just won't do their homework. Sometimes they're five, sometimes they're 17. If you've got a kid who's refusing to do their homework and it's just a friction point for you, maybe even for your child and their teacher, maybe that's a constant battle because, man, when I used to do a lot of consulting work for schools, this is probably one of the biggest reasons I was brought in, like kids being too done to do their homework. So let's talk about why homework is so hard and what we can do about it. So I think that one of the main reasons why kids can often really refuse to do homework is that they're just overloaded from learning. They've been learning all day and it's a lot. There's a lot of intensity. There's not as much fun stuff to do in school in general. Um, Certainly teenagers have a lot of homework. It just can be incredibly overwhelming. Um, And when you've got a kid with learning, executive functioning, attention issues, any kind of clinical issue, it's going to be that much harder. They're having to work much harder during the school day, right? So if you're not a neurodivergent or somebody who struggles in some way, shape, or form, or if you've had a period of anxiety, if you've had a tough time, maybe grief and loss, Imagine yourself feeling so overwhelmed and then having to show up at school and be your best self, right? Some of us can do it. We can fake it, right? Kids can mask with autism or ADHD, but it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming for the brain. It's overwhelming for the body. And so when you're then faced with sometimes just a ridiculous amount of homework, I mean, I've had some kids that they're telling me they're doing four hours a night. I mean... I don't think kids should get more than an hour it, of any age. It just gets to be kind of ridiculous. They're sort of done. And um, resistance to something that's hard is natural, right? So we'll talk about some of the strategies. Um, another big reason is medication side effects or rebound effects. So if you have your child on ADD medications, I used to run um, a CHAD support group. I had to stop because the only thing anybody wanted to talk about was medication side effects or rebound effects. And then I'd be like, well, what about using nutrition? What about PEMF? What about neurofeedback? I didn't want to hear it. They wanted a magic pill. I'm not a magic pill kind of girl, right? Um, And so these medications uh, wear off and actually what then happens is a worsening of symptoms. They call it a rebound effect. And so so the attention might've been, you might've been struggling, but then with that dip in the medication, it might be 5X or 3X or even 10X. I mean, I would hear extremes of behavior. Um, And you also then might be experiencing a higher rate of side effects, including restrictive eating, which is very common with people on ADD medications. And so there might be extremes in hunger. So they might've gone all day, not eating any food. And then you're asking them to do homework. And if they have a rebound effect, you probably remedicated them again for another four hours. And so many kids with ADHD will eat a little for breakfast and then a lot late at night. It's just not enough nutrition, people. That's why the clinical research shows us that the ADD medications after anywhere from six months to three years, they look indistinguishable in studies to unmedicated people because they're not getting enough nutrition. They're not getting enough food to power up their brain. Um, Sensory needs. Sensory needs can be a big reason why kids who've been holding it together all day, um, uh, performing well, maybe they're not performing well, but a lot of kids do better in school because of the structure routine, because of the pressure to um, really be the best at school. And so when they get home, those sensory needs go through the roof. So then sitting down again and doing homework can be really hard. Um, another surprising thing for parents is that kids not understanding what they 
have to actually do for the assignment can be a major hurdle. So you think, well, you've been in class, the teacher instructed you, uh, when your brother had Mrs. Uh, Jones, he knew what to do, <laughs> and you, you don't know what to do. So if you're overloaded, if you have sensory needs, if you're neurodivergent, if you're of anxiety, you're not processing in the same way. And so resistance to homework may be not understanding where to start. The counter to that is to, you know, have a routine where you ask your child, what do you, where do you think you should start? What is this assignment like? I always like to say, what does it look like when it's done? Because you get them to see the end result, which executive functioning breaks down when you have any clinical issue, uh, even if it's temporary, it's going to break down. So getting them to see an end result and working backwards is huge. So go and listen to my other episodes on executive functioning. I have great blogs on it. Lack of routine. So kids can resist homework when there's no routine around it. Like, do you have a set time? Do you have a set process? We have a snack. We we do trampolining. They, you know, never give your kids video game time <laughs> before their homework. I hope you know that. That's like bad idea. It's like paying somebody before they do a job. Okay. Not, not too smart. Um, so giving a clear routine, sticking by it, you know, I don't, I'm not an advocate of gaming time during the week. Um, it's going to just be a friction point for you. So having that clear structure and routine with thinking about their sensory needs, their overwhelm, how do they, do they know how to do the task and breaking it down. So. If your kid is unclear about what the task looks like at the end, what are the steps to the task, break it down with them. Have a clear system, whether you use a mind map or you always have, you know, a, a piece of paper or a whiteboard that's like step one, step two, step three, step five. So that way their brain always know that's the framework, right? I always use a mind map. I always use the steps. Whatever it is that you're going to use with your child, it's got to work and you need the constancy around it. And again, just because your kid has been in school doesn't know what they, they means they know what to do. Doesn't mean if they have 144 IQ, true story this week, that they know what to do. <laughs> Um, intelligence is very multifaceted and executive functioning is a big part of what you need to be able to order information, get through it. And, you know, your brain doesn't have an unlimited capacity when you have a learning issue, when you're constantly, your nervous system is activated, you are not going to be able to hold all this information in. And so, um, you need to have a deeper level of support. Now, if these things are going on and you're worried your kid is not learning at school or have sensory needs or not being met, talk to your teacher, have a meeting. If they have an IEP or a 504, call the team together. Don't let this go on and on and on. Um, but parents have a role in this too. Schools aren't responsible for doing the homework, but they are responsible for what goes on during the school day. And that could be a factor in all of this, right? Um, for sure. So it's all about self-regulation of the nervous system. And that's a big part of why kids struggle with homework and conflict happens, right? So if you're looking more for more support, go to our self-regulation mastery blueprint where you really get unbelievable information about the clinical issues, how to manage behaviors, and you're part of our conference. Go to drrosanne.com, self-regulation, self-reg mastery, self-reg mastery to um, join this amazing program and community. And, you know, it's not easy when you have a kid with clinical issues or neurodivergence, but with the right tools and the right guidance from somebody like me, Dr. Roseanne, you can help your child thrive. Thank you.